So if you've been subscribed to my channel, you've probably seen my what's in my camera bag video and that video did really well on my channel. So I decided to branch off from that idea and create a budget list for sports videography. Now this isn't necessarily the cheapest like camera kit you can create, but it also isn't the most expensive. Like for example, the camera I have is an A7S III, which is not the camera I'm gonna be recommending for this video. Now everything I'm mentioning in this video is linked down below. So go ahead and click the links to check out all the equipment that I'm gonna be recommending. Now there are a lot of good cameras you can buy, some better than others, some brands, that are better than others but personally i love sony so the cameras i'm going to be recommending are sony cameras so if you don't like sony i'm sorry but these are the cameras that i'm going to be recommending so the first camera is going to be the fx30 now this is an aps-c sensor camera and it is a cinema line camera so that means like it's only going to be good mainly for video of course you can take photos on it but i highly don't recommend it because it is a i believe 12 megapixel sensor the price for it is relatively cheap for this you know cinema line of cameras which the price comes out to be like 17.98 it's going to be a lot cheaper than the I'm about to recommend but if you're only focusing on video I do highly recommend this camera because it's a pretty good camera for what you get out of an APS-C sensor you don't get 12,800 ISO which is very sad compared to like the FX3 which you get that and it's very good for low light situations such as shooting at night 3200 is not too bad if you have you know very well lit stadiums or you know inside you, sh you should be fine now what's great about the camera is that it does shoot up to 4k 120 at 10 bit so 10 bit is great for color grading when you shoot s log 3 and I highly recommend shooting s log 3 because if you don't shoot s log 3 you're not getting your money's worth out of the camera now the next camera I'll be recommending is the a7 IV the a7 line the basic line is typically the hybrid camera so this will be good for photo and video now the sensor is a full frame 33 megapixel sensor I believe there are some compromises with that you get a higher megapixel count for photos which is better than the a7 III at 24 megapixels but you don't get as good low light performance as you would with an a7s III that has 12 megapixels now I've used this camera once or twice and there are a couple compromises that you're gonna have to make there isn't 4k 120 you get 4k 60 which is isn't horrible but the rolling shutter on the camera isn't the best and it's kind of it's kind of noticeable now there are more compromises that you're gonna have to make such as not being able to shoot 4k 120 but you do get the option to shoot 4k 60 at 10 bit for s log 3 again perfect for color grading now photo wise the 33 megapixels does make a big difference between 33 and 24 if you are you know trying to get decent photos out of a camera the a7 IV is the move now, I do also believe you get one UHS 2 slot I don't think you get two but it is a dual slot card camera again with the fx3 I believe you actually might get two CF Express A ports as well, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Again, I recommend those cards, but they are like 400 for a 160 card. And that is a little pricey, but again, the speed is great. But that's not the card I'm going to be recommending for this video. So don't, you know, try to look for that because that's really not worth buying if you are a beginner. Now, the price for the A7 IV is $2,500. That's not relatively cheap, but it's also not expensive. $1,000 more, you can also get the A7S III. But if you're also trying to stay on that lower end, then again, stay with the A7 IV. The bright side is that you can get it used for $500 less for $2,000, which I think it's a steal if you can find a good condition one for two thousand dollars i recommend getting that next let's go ahead and get the lenses and there are a few lenses that i'm gonna recommend some sony some tamron and some sigmas for you know short like focal lengths i'm gonna recommend the sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 again that's my lens that's the lens that i'm using right now it's a great phenomenal lens the autofocus is pretty good on it it's very smooth now there is no ibis so you don't get the stabilization with this so you're gonna have to depend on the camera stabilization which again isn't too bad a lot of time i don't even use stabilization that much i just kind of do it in post it's not the best, but you know, it gets the job done. Now, at the time of making this video, this lens is on sale for $997, which is usually about $1,100. So that's a pretty good deal. If you ask me, I paid about that much for this lens. So again, go cop that. Now, the next lens is more of a mid to long range lens, which is going to be the Tamron 35 to 150 f2 to 2.8. Now, I've personally never used this lens. A lot of creators, though, that I've seen, you know, that are in the same field as me or even out in like games themselves, I've seen them use this lens and a lot of them recommend it saying it's very good. The focus is great. But again, I've never tested it out, so I don't know. Now, the price for this lens is a little high. It's $18.59. And again, you get a very good, like, almost wide angle to almost a full zoom lens, like a 7200 would be. It's a little bit, you know, it might as well buy the 7200 f2.8, you know, Sony lens at that point because you only are, it's about the same price, to be honest. That would be the version one of the 7200, though, because the version two is like 2800 and that's insane, but I do want that lens so bad. Now, the next lens I'm going to recommend is more of on the 
budget side, I say budget side, it's going to be the Sony 7200 F4. A lot of creatives use this lens and they recommend it because the F4 is typically more than enough for like daytime shooting for sure. Sometimes nighttime shooting depending on the stadium and the lighting you get, but F4 typically does get the job done for most things. Now there are two versions of this lens. The version one is relatively cheap at $1,198 right now. And the version two, is, again, is a lot cheaper than the 35 to 150, which comes out to be $1,698. So, I mean, it's a little bit cheaper. You don't get as wide of an angle, of course, but you do get more reach out of it. Now, of course, I do always recommend getting the Sony branded lenses because you get more benefits out of it with the Sony. I would recommend the F4 over the 35 to 150 because if you have a 24 to 70 2.8, you'll be fine just having to swap it out. But if you're trying to just knock out two birds with one stone and get somewhat wide and somewhat of a little bit of reach, 35 to 150 would probably be the best choice for you. Now, next, we're going to get into audio. Uh, there are a lot of different mics out there. There's some $400 mics. There's some $50 mics. I recommend getting more of the mid-range ones because they're not too cheap, but they're not too expensive. They're not going to be the worst quality, but they're also not going to be the best. Now, the mic that I use is the Deity V Mic D3 Pro, which is on sale right now for $99. It's usually like $120. It's a great mic. You can adjust the knob of the gain, and you can also adjust a low-pass filter on there, and it has the phantom power, I believe it's called, where if you turn the camera on, you know, it turns the mic. Actually, it's not phantom power because phantom power power is means it's straight run to the mic it has camera detect camera on detect i don't know what it's called but it has that feature to where if you turn the camera on the mic will turn on if it's off then it puts it in low power mode and reserves the battery up to i believe 40 hours now the next mic i'm going to recommend is the rode video mic go 2 the go 1 is horrible don't ever buy that if you see it but the go 2 it's not too bad and the best part is is that you don't need battery it's completely phantom powered based so if you plug it into the camera you turn the camera on it's good to go. Now the mic is also $100. You don't get as much features as the DD mic does, such as like the low pass filters on the camera itself. You'd have to do it all in post. Again, this mic is $99, about the same price as DD. So that's up for you to decide if you want phantom power or if you want to worry about charging the mic all the time. Now let's go ahead and get into SD cards. There are thousands of SD cards out there. There's some fast ones, there's some slow ones, there's some ones you should just not even buy. The SD cards I'm gonna recommend are the 128 300 megabyte cards. So these are gonna be faster cards that read and write a lot faster than you know the standard $30 uh, 128 cards that are like 170 megabytes a second those are great I believe you could probably shoot 4k 60 on those but I recommend the faster cards because whenever you're trying to transfer all the footage just say you shoot 128 gigabytes of footage it's gonna take twice as long to transfer on the slower cards and when I say twice as long it could take up to like 15 20 minutes so that's for you to compensate for if the time is valuable if you need quick turnarounds then I highly recommend faster cards like I said the faster cards that I use are CF Express type A and those are so fast you can transfer 60 gigabytes in like under a minute and it's crazy fast i love them they're great but they are expensive now the ones i recommend are the sandisk ones there are other ones like angel bird has them but those prices vary the price for this card i believe is 129 right now and that's not cheap but it's not expensive like i said next let's go ahead and get into batteries now you're always going to need more than just one battery i personally use v-mount batteries but if you're just trying to be a lightweight run and gun shooter you're going to need more sony batteries now of course it's always best to go with the sony branded ones because you get more longevity out of them because they are named brand and they typically run $78 now that's not cheap and the milliamps is only $2280 there are some other options though that I'm going to recommend now newer has some that are USB-C charging and they are cheaper than the small rig versions those come out to like $28 $29 but the thing is that they also are like $2280 milliamp hours compared to the small rigs USB-C chargeable ones that are 2400 milliamps now the small rig ones are on sale for $35.99 which isn't as cheap as the newer branded ones but they have a little bit more capacity so if that matters to you, then I recommend getting the small rig ones. I've never tried them. I do want them. So small rig. I know you see me in the comments of my own videos that you've been commenting on. Send me some stuff, please. I want to make videos on them. <laughs> now, and if you don't follow me on TikTok, they did comment on one of my TikToks about my like my camera rig for game days, and they ghosted me, man. After they double commented. Now, last but not least, this isn't necessarily a camera accessory. It is what you need to dump the footage on. Now, I don't recommend getting these four to five terabyte HDDs because they are mechanical drives. That means that if you bang the drive up, accidentally drop it, move the port too much, it can break. Mechanical drives constantly have moving parts going on inside, and if you damage any of those parts, now the drive I'm going to recommend, I'm pretty sure you've seen it on my channel before, or if you follow me on TikTok, you've seen me mention this. It's the Samsung T7 SSDs. Now there's two versions of this one, it's a T7 and T7 Shield. These are the cheaper versions that are out. There are T9s. I have the four terabyte T9, which is like $300 on sale, normally like four something. I do recommend that one because it's been good for me. I love it. Uh, it's a lot of storage and it's fast as 2000 megabytes a second read and write speeds. Now with the T7s, you only get 1000 megabytes read and write speed, and they've been good enough for what I 
I've needed. They handle 4K 120 footage. Now, of course, for the future, cameras are gonna have higher quality, you know, higher bidage. Bidage? Is that is that the right word? It's gonna have higher quality video that is gonna need faster write, read and write speeds. Again, for now, if you're just a beginner, 1,000 megabytes should be good. It's actually 1050, not 1,000. Also, I don't recommend getting the one terabyte versions because those will fill up a lot quicker than you believe. Even two terabytes fill up a lot quicker than you think. There are four terabyte versions, but at this point, might as well just get the two terabyte for now if you're only shooting, you know, 4K 60 footage. That'll get you a lot far further than a one terabyte. So the one terabyte for the T7 SSD, the regular one, the aluminum casing one is 149. And the shield version, which is rugged, you know, more drop and water resistant, and that'll be 159. So if you care more about stability, then get the shield versions. So yeah, that's pretty much it on all the camera gear that I recommend for a budget videographer. That's pretty much just the basics. It's a quick, easy run and gun camera rig. You could get the handle if you want. They have the small rig handles and I have a NATO rail one on my camera and that one runs about 25 bucks for the handle and the rail and the small rig half cage I have is about 60 bucks. So if you want to build that out on your camera as well, you can. But again, if you're just trying to go for easy, quick running on things, I recommend getting just a small setup. So that's going to leave you with the camera, the lens, the mic and the SSD cards and batteries. And that's pretty much all you need, really. I know like it's tempting to buy the big camera rigs like the monitor. It's great to have for like situations like this. When I'm filming, I'm in focus. I can know I'm in focus. I can see how great the quality looks, but you don't really need that to get the job done. I did my first year or two without monitors and my footage probably wasn't the best because I wasn't really good at sports at the time, but I've been doing you know, a lot better now. I have my own sport at work and I feel like my footage comes out pretty good, <laughs> but I also do have a more expensive rig. Again, you don't need the big rig right now. It's all about who's behind the camera at the end of the day, and it really doesn't depend on the gear. I wouldn't say it doesn't completely depend on the gear you have, but it's not you know limiting factor to making great videos. As long as you know the basics of cameras, you know expose correctly, and know how to edit a little bit, color grade, maybe you'll be fine. Once again, everything I mentioned is linked down below, so go look at those links, check them out. They are affiliate links, so I will get a little kickback. I do appreciate the random $15 Amazon checks that I get here and there. I like to be transparent with that stuff because I don't get paid on YouTube yet, so the Amazon affiliate links help out me, help me, you know, purchase more gear for the channel. I appreciate y'all using the affiliate links. But yeah, that's the end of the video. I hope y'all enjoyed. Go follow all my social medias. Anyways, I hope y'all do enjoy the video. If y'all buy any of the gear, comment down below what you copped. All right, y'all have a good one. Bye.